21 years old and he's in the, he's in the NASCAR world. Um, and he's in town. There's some things going on. You're going to be over at uh, Utica College for a meet and greet later on today. Uh, you're also a diabetic. We have a lot to get into. Uh, first, though, let's not screw around and let's get right into the uh, the U.S. Cellular 250. Uh, and, and it happened in Iowa. You got out and you confronted uh, Ross Chastain and you had your helmet on. So what the hell was going on there? What happened? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, looking back on it, um, you know, you're so you're so passionate about what you do. I mean, anyone, anyone in the anyone in this series and anyone racing at this level, uh, you know, you've, you sacrifice a lot to get there, and so you're obviously very passionate about it. And um, you know, looking back on it, I probably should have gotten out and calmed down a little bit before I went over there, but. Uh, you know, I was just really fired up and wanted what to. Did do? What, did, what did he do? What did he do? What got you mad? Uh, on a restart, getting into turn one, uh, got into me a little bit, moving up the racetrack, and uh, the week before we had had a run in. Uh, so it was really just I've uh, been building up a little bit, and um, but like I said, you know, I, I felt like going back, I uh, could have dealt with it differently, and, yeah. and and probably dealt with a little more calm. So uh, you know, it's uh, something that I think every driver goes goes th goes through at some point, and. Uh, that was that was my turn, I guess. I always did it this morning. Some guy cut me off. I swear <laughs> to God, I uh, I didn't have a helmet on though. I should have. That would have um, maybe stopped me from getting out of the car. But we all feel. I mean, we aren't in your shoes. I mean, what we all want to be you to drive like you drive. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I think you get you know, the, and you try to. It, it gets built up in you. Are you one of those people that you're you're very polite? You let things go and you let things go, and then you you kind of snap a little bit. Uh, I don't know about that. I feel like uh, I don't know myself. if people would describe me as as uh, someone who lets things build up. But you know, I think that you know a lot of people. I you know I talked about this uh, on Sirius a couple weeks or earlier this week. You know, a lot of people talked about you know why do you why did you get out with your helmet on? You know, if you're going to talk, someone take your helmet off first. And um, you know, for me, it's like you know, you're belted in these cars, and you know, it's you have a lot of stuff going on inside there with seat belts and Hans devices and. Uh, air hoses and drink drink hoses. So right. for me, it's about just ripping all my stuff off and getting up there and talking to them. You know, I, you really, your intention isn't to go up there and get in a fist fight. You know, right. you want to get up there and go talk to them. Obviously, I, I went up there and was confrontational. Um, but at the same time, you're still just going up there, and you know you're not you're not thinking about fighting. You're thinking about controlling sure. the gun. Yeah. You want to. So, were they kind of implying that you you were uh, protecting yourself by leaving your helmet on? I, I guess so. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, which you know, you know that you know, you're, like I said, you're really just uh, trying to get out of the car as fast yeah. as possible. Listen, I did this once. The guy kind of cut me off. I was like 21 years old. I followed him down the road to his house. He pulls in the driveway. I pull behind him. Now I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm fired up in the head. And, and then I see he gets out of the car. The guy's huge, <laughs> enormous man. I don't know what the hell is I doing? But you don't think, right? You you you're you're moving. No, when you when you're mad, you're definitely not thinking yeah. uh, thinking as clearly as you probably should. And for me, that was uh, that was what I had to go back and take a look at, and uh, you know definitely learn from it. So what's what's NASCAR's stance on that? Do you get fined for that? Do you get suspended for that? Uh, no, I mean we we didn't. You know, ultimately it wasn't a fight. You know, and uh, you know the NASCAR will let you let you show emotion to some degree as long as it doesn't get carried away. And so uh, you know it, it, NASCAR's leaning to a point on letting the drivers um, you know work, work it out themselves before they get involved. Yeah. So what uh, brings you up here, uh, Mark Valley Health System? Uh, you're a diabetic, right? Yeah, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes uh, about four years ago, and uh, going to be having a, a visit at yeah, Utica College later on this afternoon at two, and then before that. Uh, meeting with some folks with diabetes, I'm meeting with a group of kids, and then later on a group of adults living with the disease. So, uh, pretty thankful for all the folks up here for yeah. me come hang out, and then obviously to Lily Diabetes and American Diabetes Association for for helping me get up here and, and share my story. It's uh, it's been a really amazing journey, uh, and you know a few years ago they t they told me I wouldn't be driving race cars, so uh, because of diabetes. Because of diabetes, you know my my, my nephew um, since. He's been a child. Has uh, has has he gives himself his own shots. Uh, the responsibility that's that uh, the little kids have to go through, it's unbelievable. They have to keep track of what they eat while other kids are able to. You know the whole deal, right? There's a bit, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know kids like you said, like your nephew. You know, I mean, it's they're they're extremely inspirational to me because I mean, you're talking about kids that. Um, you know, I mean, for me, I, I couldn't even imagine having that responsibility when I was younger. I was diagnosed yeah. when I was 17, and I oh. uh, felt like at least a, maybe a little bit mature. Um, yeah. And probably yeah, not, though. Probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they, you know, they, you know, they deal with it so well, and they don't let it hold them back. And 
uh, you know, they're out there playing sports and just doing everything that a, that a kid does and, and having a great time and not and not really letting diabetes hold them back at all. And so for me, uh, that's so inspirational and uh, it's uh, it's very cool to see. Yeah. Ironic, you're here on a day. We had a corn eating contest earlier this morning. <laughs> I scarfed down a giant chocolate chip cookie and I'm sipping on a Pepsi. Why is it that I'm a, 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 a able to get away with that? What's your story? How did you, why does this afflict you? Uh, so type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Um, you know, basically, uh, my pancreas doesn't create insulin anymore, the kind of short version of it. And so, uh, you know, you, you eat the chocolate chip cookie and, and you drink the Pepsi and your pancreas secretes insulin uh, and breaks down that sugar where my pancreas doesn't create insulin. So uh, I could eat all those things. I just have to uh, count the carbs and take an insulin injection to compensate for it. So uh, it's not like you can't eat those things. Uh, but for me, you know, I think that I've just learned over the years for me, you know, diet and exercise has become much yeah. more important. And, uh, just as an athlete, you know, I feel like you know it helps me inside the race car, um, and uh, it obviously helps me manage my diabetes a little bit easier. So, um, you know, it's it's less about you know, it's not that you can't eat those things. It's just that it sure. makes my makes yeah. my life a little easier if I, yeah. if I if I if I'm not eating those things every day. I definitely have uh, Sunday I ordered a pizza and and uh, hung out with my my friends and you know didn't didn't let diabetes kind of control my my whole life there. Is yeah. it true that you have a glucose monitor in your car while you're driving? Yeah, so one of the kind of newer technologies in, uh, in diabetes is called a continuous glucose monitor. Uh, mine's made by Dexcom, and basically what it is is it's, um, it looks almost kind of like a cell phone, but it's got an LED screen on it, and I put that on my dash, and then there's a sensor in my stomach, and there's a little hair wire that's actually underneath my skin, and it, uh, it sends a signal to the device on my dash, and it actually reads my blood sugar. So it's wireless. Yeah, it's all that's wireless. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, yeah. it's uh, you know, I mean, it allows me to monitor my blood sugar like I'm monitoring any of my other gauges inside yeah. the race car without it, you know, without it kind of distracting me from what I'm doing. Right. Does that actually happen? Like during a pit stop, they'll actually give you, you know, something because they are monitoring that your blood sugar is low or too high. So having the having the opportunity to monitor it, you know, if my blood sugar was to go too high, uh, there is a guy at training my pit crew to give me an insulin injection. There's a bullseye or target on my fire suit to indicate where to give me the injection. It's way more of a safety net than it is in some we have. Yeah. We have, you know, we're planning on doing. You know, we don't say on lap 100. You know, we're going to plan on taking insulin for tires. We just say, you know what, Ryan, you know, you're you're monitoring this. Let us know. We're we're ready. We're trained. Uh, but it's never had to happen before, thankfully, and uh, something that we don't plan on having to do. So you, uh, so you know, going back to my nephew's situation. So right from the very beginning, uh, he had uh, diabetes. You find out at age 17 it almost makes it more difficult because you already established a, a way of life and a lifestyle, how you eat and how you, uh, you know, the things that you that you do in life. So what was it though that, what happened to you? How did you find out? Did you get ill? Uh, what happened when you were 17 and finally they diagnosed you with the, with with diabetes? Yeah, so there was definitely symptoms, you know, I wasn't feeling great, um, you know, and that probably went on for a month or so. Um, weight loss is one of the biggest ones, uh, and then for me, the biggest one was the thirst, but my parents saw me, and I had been complaining about um, not feeling well, and I got home from a trip to North Carolina, I was actually in the process of moving from California to North Carolina, and uh, I'd been gone for uh, two to three weeks, and I get home, my parents are like, I can't believe how much weight you lost, you know, and the whole time, I had, they knew I'd been not yeah, feeling well, yeah. so uh, they were like, let's get you to the doctor, and took me to the doctor, told him my symptoms, you know, they, they checked my blood sugar and it was uh, well over 400 fasting, so I didn't eat anything that day. Um, and uh, they pretty much diagnosed me on the spot with diabetes. And my first question, uh, being 17 and pretty single single focused was, okay, well, how, how does this affect me in my racing? And they told me, you know, son, you're, you're never going to race again, you know, you've got much bigger problems here. Uh, but for me, all I heard you were going to be done racing. Yes. Yeah, so for me, all I heard was how it was going to affect my racing. My mom yeah. was devastated. Obviously, her son getting diagnosed with a, with a lifelong disease. But for me, it was um, I had other worries. So yeah, uh, I was just really fortunate uh, to be able to find an amazing uh, doctor in Southern California, a diabetes specialist who had worked with a lot of athletes, and uh, we worked really hard together to come up with a way and, and get it cleared through NASCAR and um, to come up with a way to get me back into a race car. So. Uh, to find to find my current doctor and to work with NASCAR and to see how supportive they were, uh, I just feel like I was surrounded by a great group of people and I was just very blessed to be able to even get back into a race car and, awesome. and do what I do. Ryan Reed is, uh, is a NASCAR driver, pretty amazing, and he's the one responsible for bringing all the 20-year-old, the 18-year-old, 19-year-old ladies into the sport. Um, I'm yeah. sure the girls just love you. 
Oh, I hope so. Yeah. That's, that's plan. Yeah. That's all of our plan. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always work out that way for all of us, though. No. Uh, it doesn't always. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, all right, Brian. Good stuff. So today, um, again, uh, your your schedule today, two o'clock, you'll be over the Library Concourse at Utica College, over on Bridgestone Road, and a meet and greet. They get to come in, take pictures, all that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Please come out, um, say hi, and take a picture, get an autograph. Uh, ask me any questions you want and, uh, and come hang out. And then you're going to meet with the kids. Yeah, so we're actually going to meet with the kids here this morning. Um, you know, it's, we got a group of, uh, of kids with diabetes that so we're going to go hang out with and talk to them. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure most of them are going to be inspiring more me more than the other way around. But uh, tell my story and, and make sure they know to go chase their dreams with diabetes. Pretty awesome. So uh, when you're told you can't do it anymore, you're that uh, you're that person that said, "Yes, I am. I'm going to do it." Yeah. And uh, and you, uh, you you won here. You won this battle. I don't know. If, yeah. I don't, diabetes is something you you know. I've, it's, you know, there's no cure right now, which yeah. hopefully that'll change. But for right now, uh, it's a lifelong disease, and so I mean, I don't know if you ever win, but you can definitely not let it hold you back, and that's that's the main goal. Awesome. Uh, Ryan Reed, really a great inspiration, and. Uh, Keep doing what you're doing, and keep that helmet on. Don't don't worry about what they say. <laughs> Thank All you. All right, uh, 8:31. We'll take a quick break. Hold on tight. Coming right back at WMX.